Okay, so I want to talk about something that's always the center of controversy in any PvP game, balance. I want to give you all my completely honest opinions on hi reses attempts to balance paladins. Now keep in mind these are my opinions, if you agree with me great, if you don't then that's fine and I'd love to hear yours so feel free to tell me. So the best way to start this off is to tell you guys how I feel Paladins should be balanced as a whole. Paladins is a team based FPS that Hi-Rez is pushing hard to make into an eSport. So I feel that Paladins needs to be balanced around that. It needs to be balanced for 5v5 coordinated team play that's at a high level. In order for it to succeed as both a team based FPS and an eSport, Hi-Rez can't balance it for individual solo players and lower skilled players, because if they do, and they have been, it'll cause much more harm to the game than good. The game's balance is in a very unhealthy spot, probably one of the unhealthiest spots I have ever seen it in since I started playing in OB35. Right now the game has a lot wrong with it. For starters, we're in a very tank heavy meta. Double tank is very good and very strong right now. It's a very similar situation to what Overwatch had with its triple tank meta a while back. The tanks are just too good at too many things right now. The tanks are basically big bruisers that can flank and bully people more effectively than the actual flankers can. As of late, I've seen several things that have contributed to this. One is the constant nerfing of flanks. Take a look at all the flanks in the game. Androxus, Buck, Eevee, Lex, Maeve, Sky, and Zin. How many of those have never been nerfed before? Zin has the lowest nerf count with only one nerf, but in this case it was pretty needed because countering dot damage was stupid and probably unintended, so we'll say he hasn't been nerfed. It was more of a fix. So Zen's the only one and he's not even a good character. His only purpose is to be annoying and buy time by staying alive through retaliation counter and billowing away. Outside of that, he has no purpose. He is not an effective character. I am actually planning on making a video solely about Zen's place in the game, but for now back to the other flanks. They have all been nerfed, not even just once or twice, no, multiple times. Maeve received a back alley beating that's Hi-Rez's words, not mine. A back alley beating of nerfs that Maeve hasn't really been able to recover from even after multiple buffs. Maeve was nerfed because lower skilled players couldn't handle her, and Hi-Rez felt pressured to nerf her when she already wasn't even viable at higher skilled play anyway. Now, I don't blame the people asking for nerfs because at the end of the day, there's always going to be people begging for unjustifiable nerfs. Hi-Rez has to be the one to stand their ground and say no. Nerfing this character would do more harm than good. Unfortunately, they don't, and many characters have suffered from it. Like another flank, Eevee. How many times do you think Eevee has been nerfed? I've honestly lost count. I wouldn't be surprised if it was at 10 times or more by now. Recently, Eevee had Reprieve nerfed, and while I do think that it was a good call, they also nerfed her Blink range card at the same time. So this effectively nerfs her Wormhole Legendary too, forcing people to only have one option in the nerfed Reprieve Legendary. Because, let's face it, Over the Moon still isn't very good. And Roxas and Buck both suffered heavily with the removal of Mobility Legendaries. At the time, I was willing to accept the removal of them and see where it led. Hi-Rez stated that high mobility causes very frustrating experiences for players, and I was willing to agree and accept it. However, I was definitely wrong because all it really has done is lower the viability of several characters and help make the flank class very underwhelming. The removal of high mobility legendaries was a direct byproduct of Hi-Rez again listening to the lower skilled players who don't put the effort into improving their aim, adapting, and learning how to deal with things. And also, probably console. Console has an alibi though, their controllers limit their ability to deal with such high mobility targets. Console and PC should be balanced separately anyway though, and it's Hi-Rez's job to do that. You can't balance them together and expect a healthy game, at least one side is going to suffer. So with flanks being nerfed down so much, they can't do their job more effectively than the tanks can. The tanks are very good at getting up in your face and forcing you to deal with them. With the combination of their own movement, their barriers, and their high health pools, they can bully damage dealers, supports, and flanks relatively easily. Tanks just have a lot of free reign. 
and with the recent nerfs to blast characters like Bomb King and Drogos that are able to deal with tanks, it gives them even more free reign. Bomb King was hit hard when the mobility legendaries were removed, he lost the original accelerant for one that makes grumpy bombs explode faster, while this is a very useful legendary in random casual games because people like to knock it out of the way, it is not as useful against higher skilled players who have the detonation time memorized and do get out of the way or use some other part of their kit to block it or nullify it. Then we have Drogos who recently had his fire spit damage fall off nerfed, making fire spit much less effective. On top of that, they did this at the same time as releasing Leanne, which was already an indirect nerf to Drogos. Leanne, being a powerful hit scan, can easily take Drogos out of the sky and keep him from being effective. Drogos already had plenty of other characters that could do this already, so now Drogos is definitely struggling to stay viable in such a counter-heavy environment. Regardless of all this, there was still an outcry to nerf him from lower skilled players that would go so far as to ban him in almost every competitive game. Drogos is dangerous when you allow him to be. If you don't deal with him, or you can't hit him, he's a monster. If you can, he's no stronger than any other character, so those two are not justifiable reasons to nerf him. Right now, you can argue that Willow is a better blast damage pick than Drogos and Bomb King for a variety of reasons. Her blast flower legendary is very powerful and can be pretty unpredictable because you only need a little bit of the AoE to land on a target to get the bonus damage on that target. So you can't always be positive about how much Willow is going to do to you. Her dead zone is very powerful because it basically says, hey, you can't stand here or you're going to die. Her seedling also adds to that a bit as well. It looked like Hi-Rez was on track to making her as good as Bomb King and Drogos, but after the nerfs to those two characters, that got thrown out the window, which is a real shame. Having multiple viable options like that means that the game is that much more balanced. I'm scared that they'll eventually nerf Willow because of her increased viability from them nerfing Drogos and Bomb King. I've seen this happen in a few other games and it never works out. The devs go and nerf something and because of that they have to nerf something else and it's just an endless spiral of poor balance decisions. So we have the nerfing of flanks and Drogos and BK contributing to tanks becoming so good but there's also the obvious one and that's the buffing of tanks. As he got more range, the Barrack got his Slug Legendary, allowing him to do more damage from farther away. Makoa got his CC Immunity Legendary, Ruckus got his Advanced Distance increased, and was one of the few characters to luckily keep his Mobility Legendary. And Fernando. Oh man, Fernando. Fernando has become one of the strongest characters in the game, right next to Cassie, and we'll talk about her later. So Fernando had his Flamethrower buffed, and his Fireball buffed up considerably allowing for the return of Flank Nando. Now, I'll admit I was very on board with this at the start, but I failed to consider how powerful this would be in the double tank meta, so I was definitely wrong to assume that Fernando wouldn't become overpowered in the video I made, and I apologize for that. At the higher level of play, Fernando is a must-pick or ban, again along with Cassie. At lower levels of play, players mainly just hold up their barrier with Fernando, with the Aegis Legendary, and hope things work out. While at the higher level of play, Fernando players constantly harass and bully the enemy team. Like a lot of the other tanks, he can get in your face, spam you down, chase after you if you try to escape, and get out with a kill. He does this better than any other tank, and it goes without saying that he does it much better than any other flank. He is just a force that has to be dealt with immediately, or he's just going to have his way. So tanks are a definite problem. Hi-Rez needs to bring Fernando down a bit and undo the nerfs to flanks as well as Bomb King and Drogos. Then we can see how the meta goes and further changes can be made from there for a more balanced and healthy environment. Those aren't the only problems with the game's balance though. I did say I was going to talk about Cassie. Like I said, along with Fernando, Cassie is one of the strongest characters in the game. Cassie does way too many things too well. Cassie has very high damage, mobility, and self-sustain. Her exaction legendary makes it so your first arrow after a roll can do 910 damage. Then you have her incitement 4 card that will basically instantly reset your roll cooldown. So in theory, you could have bonus damage on every arrow and infinite mobility. Yes, this does require skill, but there is a limit on how much value you can give to any one character, even if it does require skill. Plus, in this tank-heavy meta, it isn't really hard to land those arrows on such big, beefy targets. 
Cassie's Onslaught 4 card will also give her 40% lifesteal on hit, so you could in theory be healing for 364 health on every arrow while being impossible to hit because you're rolling around everywhere. You can stack this with Life Rip 2 and increase that as well. This all started when Hyra started buffing Cassie for no real reason, besides she wasn't getting picked very much. But that didn't mean that Cassie was bad and in need of buffs, at least not the ones they decided to give her. Cassie needs to be brought down a bit, and I think the best way to do this is to bring her incitement card down. I'm not sure by how much, that's up for debate, but it would stop her from having such powerful damage, mobility, and sustain all at the same time. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is the supports, because there's a lack of balance there as well, but it isn't as blatant as with everything else I mentioned. Right now we have three main healers in Maldamba, Ceres, and Ying, and we have four off healers in Grok, Grover, Genos, and Pip. The off healers are situational picks, which is fine. I don't think any of them are bad or too good. You can make an argument about Genos, but it's still too early to know exactly where he's going to stand in the game. As far as the off healers balance goes, I can't really say too much because it's hard to know what would happen to them if the tanks and the flanks get fixed. Right now, Grok is valued a bit more than the other off healers because in double tank, it's easy for him to get down his totem and quickly heal them up while they stop the enemy from destroying his totem with their barriers or, you know, themselves. If the tank meta was to go away, then you'd probably see Grok fall off and Pip and Grover rise up. I'm not going to talk too much about them though. I want to talk about the main healers more. So we have Maldamba who can put out a lot of healing, heal multiple people, and decide who he wants to heal. He definitely has a lot of value, but he also takes a lot of skill, and I think it's the perfect mix of the two so that he doesn't feel overwhelming. Then there's Ceres, who has the highest single target healing in the game and can also decide who she wants to heal. So they're both really good picks. Then there's Ying, who has lower healing than both of them and can't decide who she wants to heal. This is where the imbalance is. Hi-Rez has nerfed Ying a ton, and they've done it because she's a relatively easy character, so they feel that her healing output should be lower so that she can have a downside. But Ying's downside was originally that she couldn't choose who she wanted to heal because her illusions do it automatically. If you want to focus your healing into a tank at one moment and then into your damage dealer at another, you can. That was always her downside, and by lowering her healing output, they gave her another. So Ying has two big downsides, while Ceres and Maldamba really only have one. This is just like the Drogos Palm King Willow situation. They were on track to having three equals, but due to unneeded nerfs, they threw that out. So what they need to do is undo Ying's nerfs so she can stand with Mal and Ceres as a viable main healer. You can't just have two options in a game with a ban system. Because when one gets banned, then that's an advantage for the team who has the only viable choice. With three options though, that doesn't really happen, and that's what hi -Rez needs to strive for. Multiple viable options. So basically, to sum this all up, undo all these unneeded nerfs, bring down Fernando and Cassie a bit, balance PC and console separately, and don't give in to the outcries of lower skilled players. You want an eSport? Balance it like one. At the end of the day, it's high res who makes the balanced decisions, and I'm not trying to be hard on them. I just want them to do better because I know that they can. I don't want to see them nerf characters out of viability anymore. The next patch preview is this Friday at 1pm Eastern for a change, and I'm nervous to see what they hit this time. I know Leanne is pretty strong right now, pretty up there, but still lower than Cassie and Fernando. I can definitely see them messing with her a bit, but I don't want to see them do something too drastic, like take the damage immunity off her ult or something else big like that. Her ult isn't fantastic, it's just okay, and if they take damage immunity off of it, then Leon is going to be a sitting duck yelling kill me whenever she ults. I know there are a lot of people who feel like Leon is a skillless character that anyone could do really well with, but that couldn't be further from the truth. If you don't have good aim, Valor and Grace won't do enough on their own to make you really bring value to the team. Leon is all about good aim and chaining her abilities together to really bring out her burst potential. Most can't just pick her up and do that. If they could, I wouldn't see so many bad Leons around. From what I've seen from the pros, they don't really care about her grace and valor like the lower skilled players do. They care about her having both too much DPS and burst, which I can totally see. I've bursted people down way faster than I thought I probably should be able to. 
Let's say you use Presence, then fire two quick body shots, and then use either Grace or Valor. That's 2,000 damage more if you have the Precision Legendary. Some are talking about a slight fire rate nerf, so she can still keep her ability chaining. I wouldn't mind it if the Precision Legendary only affected her primary and not Grace and Valor as well. I also think if they decreased Grace's auto-aim cone, that'd be pretty good. I have graced people at like 120 degrees and I didn't even know that they were there. It is very forgiving. I should at least be looking in their direction, right? Anyway, whatever they do, I just hope they don't gut her. And that's pretty much it guys, I want to thank you all for watching, I very much appreciate it, and I'm going to see you guys later. bye!